Hello loves, I have never really given you a cake from start to finish, so let's do a start to finish for this cake that you see right here. If there are toppers to make like you saw on that cake, I usually make them early on so that they have time to harden. Most of the time I use fondant and sometimes I use Rice Krispie Treat so that I'm not using a big huge ball of fondant, but this time I just used fondant. So I'm making the polar bear and I always start with the base or the body. This one happens to have the head kind of molded into the body, but if it was the other way around, I would just make the body first and then attach the head. Somebody commented that the nose was on upside down, so it's too late now. When fondant is still very fresh while you're working with it, meaning it hasn't truly hardened yet, it'll stick together with just a very light dampened paper towel. And that's what you see me rubbing with the paper towel onto the fondant. Now I am using an edible marker. I thought it would be a lot easier than like using edible paint. And I am working on the penguin for the little shadows that you see. I'm using edible dust, I guess is what it's called. It's like a food coloring as well. And on to the igloo. The igloo was the easiest part out of the whole thing. Again, while the fondant is still soft, it's very easy to make indentations in it. Also, what I use for the table so that it doesn't stick is cornstarch. I don't like using powdered sugar because I feel like it's so grainy. It doesn't feel good on my hands. So cornstarch is just perfect. Again, using some of that edible dust to kind of give it some shadow. You can see it makes a huge world of difference when you use this. And since the fondant is still kind of fresh, it sticks very easily with the damp paper towel that I was telling you about. I also made an owl, which you guys did not see, and a seal. And I used edible images for the trees. I just Google these images and I copy paste them onto word art and kind of chop them up how I like. Okay, next up is the cake and the cake's already baked. I bake on Mondays so that they are out of the way and I freeze them and then I take them out when I need them. Trust me, it makes them more moist. It's science, look it up. So this cake is going to have a pudding type filling and that means I need to make sure I have a good dam around it. I've showed you guys this before, but I create a dam with the buttercream. I press down to seal it in and then I give it one final roundabout. Then I go around the edge again to kind of smoosh it back in because it went out of the sides, if you know what I mean. I hope that makes sense. And finally, I'm able to scoop in that filling and I go ahead and I push it all the way to the edge of the buttercream. I am very generous when it comes to my fillings. I add the middle layer and then I go ahead and I repeat the process again. But prior to doing that, I like to seal that dam in between the layers. So you see me using the spatula up and down to kind of seal them together making sure to work very lightly because now the cake is kind of wobbly because of that filling. I go ahead and I repeat that process. So one circle around, that's not enough to hold in a good amount of filling. So I usually put two or three more circles of buttercream. Repeating the steps of sealing in that dam and then adding the filling and putting the last layer on top. I seal the edges again together, like you see me doing there with my spatula up and down. And then, this is very important, in order for me to ice this cake because it's very wobbly, I put it back in the freezer for a good 10 minutes until that cream has hardened and that way it is so much easier to ice. I don't even know how people ice cakes without doing that prior. Unless they're buttercream filled cakes, then you can because really it doesn't shake around a lot and buttercream is super firm. So the cake you saw was going to be that top tier, it was vanilla with white chocolate cream. But the cake that you saw, I put on a cutting board and those cutting boards are devoted only to my cakes and it has a board underneath it with a hole so it's all ready to get tiered onto this cake. So now that this cake is out of the freezer, I go ahead and I pipe around the layer of buttercream. I try to make sure to pipe an even coat all around the edges and that's what you see me doing here. I'll take it off as I continue to swipe around. So this part is a tedious process because I continue to go around and around and every time there's still a hole somewhere or somewhere that's not even. When I'm finally happy with the outcome of it, I put it in the freezer. That's for a good, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. And then I take it back out. This is it freshly out of the freezer. And now I can finally give it a good scraping to get a nice, sharp, clean look. Sometimes I'll add some cream and holes that are not supposed to be there. And then again, swipe again. Back into the fridge it goes to kind of firm up and then back out so that I can use my gel food coloring to kind of blot around the edges. I should honestly get sponsored for this, but I only use bounty paper towel rolls because they don't leave those little fuzzy pieces that other napkins leave unless you overuse it. 
After I blotted out the blue color, I kind of swirled it around to give it a very soft touch so that it looks like the sky. Okay, back in the fridge it goes and I had colored both cakes. So now I'm going to put them on top of each other. I'm using five straws because the top tier is a five inch cake. I put the straw in the middle and I cut it according to the height of the cake. Then I take that straw out and I cut the remaining straws the same exact length. I do this because I know my top cakes aren't perfectly even, but at least the straws are going to be even. It'll hold that top tier in an even place. I add some buttercream for the glue to kind of glue the top tier to the bottom tier and a skewer for stability and I careful SpongeBob it out as I lay it on the top. So since this cake is going to have snow, I'm covering up the in-between layers with the buttercream to give it that snow effect and I am using sprinkles for that as well. Time to add the little fondant pieces. Now, as you can see, this kind of cracked in the middle. I was a little upset because it did harden and I forgot that I wanted it to curve with the cake, but it still worked out at the end. So if you don't want your fingers to harden right away, put them in a Ziploc bag. I added the polar bear to the top with a straw so that it's not too heavy. I inserted the penguin with a toothpick just to make sure that it stays in one place. You can also use buttercream as well. The seal and the other penguin are on the bottom and they are stuck with the buttercream snow. Then I looked at the owl and I'm like, wait a minute, it's not gonna look nice there. So I had to move that penguin to the other side. That way I can put the owl in place of that spot. And the owl I just stuck on with some buttercream. You see me putting it there on the back of it and that will help keep it in place. Afterwards, I sporadically placed the trees around and I kind of had to figure out what was the best spot for them. Some trees looked nicer in other areas. You can see the stick kind of went out from the back so I had to put it down with it and it was kind of at an angle so I had to take it back out and press it back down again and it covered up that hole where the penguin was. So that worked out great. Put a couple on the top and I had to make sure to kind of eye it all out to see which ones were the bigger ones and the smaller ones that would flow evenly together. And I did want to put one more on the side. Now the customer opted for no name or age on the cake. Sometimes they do like the name and the age on the cake, sometimes they don't. Otherwise, I probably would have put the age on the top tier in the middle part and maybe the name on the igloo. So everything on this cake is edible other than the skewers and the straws and the toothpicks. And I do make sure to let my customers know that prior. All in all, I think this cake took about six to seven hours. I'm not exactly sure, but that's the final product.